The future of space exploration, the emerge of private space sector and daily life in space. These are among the topics we discuss today with two special guests from International Space Station. Terry Wirt, the current ISS commander, and Samantha Cristoforetti, the first Italian female astronaut in space. Hi Terry, buongiorno Samantha, thank you very much for joining us on Euronews. I would like to start by asking how you feel about the other three crew members returning to Earth. As the next crew will arrive at the end of March, do you feel a bit lonely up there in space? You know, it was it was it was sad seeing those guys uh, leave. We were together for four months. They're they're very good friends, and um, we really enjoyed our time together. So it was sad seeing them leave. Uh, we're not too lonely though. We have me, Samantha, and Anton are together now, and this is an interesting two-week time where we'll have the space station ourselves before our next crew arrives. In the first four months of your mission, you have carried out uh, several scientific experiments. Samantha, could you tell us more about this and explain the importance of these tests? The space station is an outstanding laboratory that allows us to do research in this very special condition, which is microgravity or weightlessness, um, which is very intriguing in many scientific fields because uh, by doing scientific observations in microgravity, you can observe and measure and quantify phenomena that otherwise you would not be able, maybe not even to notice and certainly not to study in detail in the effect, in the presence of the effects of gravity on Earth. Uh, I, I've done a lot of uh, things in the last few months. I can mention the few things that I have been working on recently and that I will be working on soon, which are two uh, European Space Agency experiments, airway monitoring and uh, triple looks. And uh, both of them actually have been a little bit troublesome. Um, and I actually like to say this because, uh, you know, we, you don't want to give the impression that in science everything works right off the bat and immediately. Sometimes it is hard. It takes several trials. It takes a little bit of trial and error. It takes adjustments. It takes learning. And that has definitely been the case, for example, on this experiment airway monitoring, which is a very intriguing scientific protocol that for the first time is going to study how the gaseous exchange in the lung is affected by both the weightlessness, microgravity, and even reduced pressure. And then uh, one which is uh, going to come up is triple looks, which is uh, another intriguing scientific protocol which is aimed at studying the effect of weightlessness on the immune system, on the behavior of some specific immune cells that are involved whenever our body fights disease. Terry, another goal of this mission was to prepare the station for the arrival of future private spaceships. For NASA it will mean once again having direct access to space. How important will it be having a partnership with private companies for space exploration? Well, it's, it's been a big part of our mission so far, both doing spacewalks and doing work inside. Uh, to get ready for the future vehicles that will be coming to the space station. And it's very important for NASA, our way forward, the way that we're going to launch astronauts from Florida once again to the space station is going to be on uh, both a Boeing capsule and a SpaceX capsule starting sometime in the next probably two years. And we're really looking forward to that. It's it's a important part of the space station program. It's an important logistical thing that needs to be solved in order to get people to the station and back, so it's very important. And what comes after the International Space Station once its mission is over? How do we ensure the presence of humans in space? Well, that's a great question. Uh, the plan that NASA has is to build a rocket called SLS, which is a heavy lift rocket. It's something that is that is much bigger than what we have today, and it will be able to launch the Orion capsule with humans on board, as well as uh, landers or other uh, components to, via, to destinations beyond Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. And this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. So the moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to. And we're building these building block components in order to allow us to do that eventually. Samantha, according to a recent survey based on research on internet, you are the most popular Italian woman in the world, ahead Monica Bellucci and Laura Pausini. Does it mean that science may be more attractive than showbiz?
your haircut. Your haircut. Well, uh, um, I'm not sure that that was a service conducted according to the um, most scientific and statistical criteria, <laughs> but uh, um, just to take it for, for the fun that I, I'm sure it was meant to be. Um, I'm certainly happy that uh, a, a person like me, who is uh, really nobody as, as a person, but uh, has the privilege of being the representative of something really special, which is, uh, um, you know, the, the space station program, having this incredible uh, technological scientific uh, achievement, which is really a testament of what uh, humanity can achieve when we decide to work together and put together our best minds all over the world to do something which is really amazing. So in, uh, in that sense, of course, I, uh, I, I am happy that uh, <laughs> about the outcome of this survey, of, which, again, I, I'm sure it was meant in, in, in good fun. Now some quick questions sent in by our social media followers. In around two months, you will come back to Earth. What did you guys miss the most during your stay in space? Well, that's a great question. You know, living here is, is very pleasant. We have everything that we need. Uh, the food is good. We have, we're here with good friends. And so life here in space is pretty um, the thing I think we miss the most is people, you know, missing our families on Earth, missing our friends, getting back to see folks. Uh, that's the thing that you really miss more than anything. Another thing that I'll throw out there, we were just talking about this, is weather. We don't have weather here, and we were, we were just talking about rain and, and snow and, and what it's like to have on Earth. So that is something that I miss, and I'm looking forward to experiencing a little bit of weather. Hopefully a lot of sun and, and warmth, but, you know, other, other rain and snow and that kind of stuff is something that we don't get here. Okay, to finish, I would like to ask how you remember on the station actor Leonard Nimoy and was your interest in space inspired by Star Trek and Mr. Spock, just like so many people? Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, definitely, I was uh, as a big tracker growing up. Uh, I, I was really, really, really a, a big fan. Um, and uh, I do think that he has played a, a part in, in, helping to, in helping me to, to show me this path uh, to to help me become aware that this is what I wanted to do, um, you know, be, become an astronaut, travel to space, and, and play a little bit my part in, uh, in this human adventure of, uh, of space exploration, which is just, you know, one long journey, and, and, and one day, maybe, or, you know, I, I believe so, a, a Star Trek reality will, uh, will, be, will, be, will become true. So um, I, uh, I really felt like uh, I had an obligation to, to honor uh, Leonard Nimoy when he passed away recently. Thank you very much for having been with us. Enjoy the rest of your mission. As Mr. Spock would have said, live long and prosper. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And hello to all the folks down there in Europe. And we'll see you back on Earth in a few months.